Quickly, 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 because I promised leadership I was not going to be long. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 1, verse 40. And the Bible says, one of the two who heard Jesus speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ or Christo. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. Andrew has brought his brother Simon to Jesus. Jesus Christ looked at him. The Greek word for look is blapo. Or uh, look is blapo. It means gaze or look with intent. And blapo looked. Jesus Christ looked at him. He gazed at him. And when he was looked, Jesus Christ looked at uh, Simon who was Peter, Jesus Christ prophesied to him. And look at what Jesus Christ said. He said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is a stone. You see, prophecy is looking in the telescope of your destiny. So when you stand before the prophet... He looks in the telescope of your destiny. He sees the past, present, and the future. Jesus Christ looks and blapo, blapo, gaze at Peter. And he said, Peter, you are the son of Jonah. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ is trying to say, Peter, you are going to become like Jonah. What is prophecy? Prophecy is edification, comfort, and exaltation. But Dr. Barrow and I, we've ministered and used the prophetic, travel around the world, and God is giving us a revelation. Prophet, what you experience today, the prophetic ministry is God speaking to your potential and not to your experience. Say that with me. Prophecy Prophecy. is not to my experience. But it's to my potential. Jesus Christ said, You son, son, I mean, you are, you are Simon, son of Jonah. He said, Do you know you are Peter? But you're going to be like Jonah. What are you talking about? You're going to be like Jonah. Say, okay, Sunday school. What did Jonah do? Jonah went, God told him to go, and you said it, Pastor. Glad. Jonah went to Nineveh. Nineveh was a Gentile community. And guess what? He began to minister to the people and the people got saved. And Jesus Christ said, I'm looking at you, Simon. You're going to be like Jonah. And your ministry, you're going to go to the Gentiles and you're going to minister to the people. Wow. Guess what? Peter, when the church was born, you remember Acts chapter 10? He went to the Gentile community and ministered. And even it nearly cost him his credentials. Hello? Because after he came back, they wanted to revoke his credentials. Why? Because he had stepped in the anointing like Jonah. Jonah went to the sinners, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to the people who had turned their back to God, and, uh, and Peter ministered the word of the Lord. You remember he went to Cornelius' house? And when he, the Holy Ghost fell, because they were thinking, oh, the Holy Ghost is only for the Jews. But God is more than your theology. And God said, Peter, you are going to be more than theology. When man has put confinement, you're going to step out. 
of the boundary. So Jesus Christ prophesied to him. Prophecy is to your potential. You have the ability if you walk with God and not your experience. So he won. He became like Jonah and he went to the Gentiles and he ministered. That's not all. He said, but you shall be called what? You shall be called Cephas or Cephas, which is a stone. That means when you're going through all that rock, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. So Jesus Christ was prophesying to Peter. He said, Peter, you're going to go through rejection. You're going to go through a ship. You see, Jesus Christ was prophesying, prophesying, telling him. And Jesus Christ said, you're going to be the chief cornerstone in the ministry. Guess who rose up on, on the day of Pentecost and preached and 3,000 souls came to Jesus? It was Peter. So that's why leadership calls, invites the prophet to speak and give you an outline of your destiny. And if you take that, you walk with God, you believe God, keep it in your heart, God will perform it. Jesus Christ prophesied to Peter. Peter was a fisherman. Peter never thought he was going to go to the Gentiles. But because of the word, he said Isaiah chapter 55, my word, shall never return unto me. Jesus' word never returned unto him. Simon. Simon means here. Shama o Israel. Shama. You know, here. The Greek is akou, acoustics. That's how we have the word acoustics. Simon, hear. Simon means hacking or hear. When God speaks to you, if you attentively hear the word of the Lord and encapsulate it, they that wait upon the Lord. So prophecy is to your potential and not to your experience. Prophecy is an outline. Of your destiny. That is why it's important. We covenant with this ministry. We're going to come and prophesy to everybody. We want God to speak. And give you an outline of your destiny. You are Simon. Son of Jonah. Son of Jonah. But you shall be called Cephas or a stone. What does it mean? It means when everything is rocking. They're going to depend on you. They are going to rest on you. Jesus Christ said about a building on Matthew chapter 5. The foolish man built his house on his son. Trouble comes, wind comes, it will go. But Jesus Christ said, if it's built on the stone, the rock. The rock is what? Hermeneutically is Jesus. If you build your life on Jesus. You remember Peter? He was waving. You remember Jonah, he didn't want to do the work of God. God spoke to him. He bought his ticket, cruise ticket, and was going to Las Vegas to play and spend his money because he thinks he's the only boss of his life. But God was in control. Jonah thought he was in control of his life and his destiny. Do you know what God said? He said, go ahead, make my day. And God spoke to Gabriel and Michael. And God said, what are you waiting for? Let the storm shake. All of a sudden, the storm was shaking. And Jonah was sleeping. And the people prayed. There are some people in your life. You need to get them out of your life. And that's why you are in trouble. That's why things are shaking. They need Jesus. They don't need you. And they try to keep Jonah. They try, they try to do everything. But God is in control. So they did everything. They said, oh, let's pray. Why do we try everything else? Then we pray. Then they came, they prayed. And we found Buddy was sleeping. Are you sleeping in your destiny? Are you sleeping in the assignment that God is giving you? When souls are going to hell. And you are sleeping. Get up from your comfort zone. Jonah, get up. They told him he confessed. Guess what? 
they release him. God said, you want to go on a cruise? You're going to go on a cruise. God prepared a submarine. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is in control of your life. Do you know what God did? There's so many fish in the sea. There's so many creatures in the sea. But God prophesied to a whale. And the whale, listen. And God said, I want you. God put the GPS. And God positioned him. He said, at a certain frequency. To everything, there's a season, there's a time. At a certain time, I want you to open your big mouth. I'm sending you a happy meal. <laughs> and when I say open, guess what? He's the boss. Jesus Christ said, who is, the, the, the disciples said, who is this? That even the wind, they, they obey him. So God, wait. <laughs> How many, okay, you want to disobey? Go ahead, make God's day. You want to run? You want to get in trouble? Go ahead. God, the Bible says one day is a thousand and thousands one day. You don't have the time. God has all the time. So God will wait. So God waited. And God looked at the whale. And God said, now we're going to count to five. Five is grace. Four, uh, five, the fish was moving the tail. He said, no, no, no. Don't know. Just be still and know that I'm God. Four, the corners of the world. Three, ah, the power of agreement and the Trinity. Two, the power of witness. One, there's only one God. There's no God like Jehovah. He's a great God. God said, now the fish opened up and he had a happy meal. And God said, hasta la vista, bye-bye. You don't want to go to Nineveh? God will give you a free cruise to Nineveh. <laughs> but when he was in the belly of the fish, he began to scream. He said, God, hey, you know, I love you. I will do whatever you tell me to do. Really? Why don't you say yes to God now? Than waiting and fighting. Who are you fighting against? Jesus Christ, I mean, God, Jesus Christ told Saul, who became Peter, uh, Paul, he said, it's hard to kick against the prick. Don't fight. Don't resist. Acquiesce. And then, God, you see, God is programmed the fish. He programmed the fish, and God said, okay, now open your mouth again. God is in control of your life, your destiny. Boy, when Jonah came out, he screamed. He said, I'm going to preach the gospel. He said it. Peter became like Jonah. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. But he became Jonah and, and went and preached in Corinna's house. People got saved. And then his na Jesus' name was glorified. Now he said, you are going to be like Cephas, a stone. That means people are going to rest on you. You, people are going to depend on you. People are going to build. So on the day of Pentecost, when the church was shaking, Peter was a stone. You remember, even Satan had prayed. I mean, uh, uh, Satan had required uh, to, to, to save him. But because of the prophetic word, the prophetic word, and called him. He became a stone. God wants to cause everybody's life to be a stone. To be anchored in Jesus. Let me give you a chance. Are you fighting against God? Are you resisting? Are you just like Jonah? You've got your own life. But it was given to you by God. Why won't you say yes to Jesus? I want you to come, man of God, and, and lead people to the Lord. Let's give him a hand. Amen.